Hello ladies and welcome back to my channel for the few, one or two of you that actually have watched. So while I paint, I'm a watercolour artist, um, I want to talk to you about hormones because I'm learning at the moment so much and I'm feeling things because I've been on HGH half an hour a day and testosterone cream which I rub into my skin every day in the morning after my shower onto clean dry skin as per the doctor's recommendations and I feel subtly so much better. So it's making me think that hormones are everything um, and of course I don't want to fall into the trap of overstating or over glorifying the role that hormones can play um, diet exercise lifestyle obviously plays huge roles but I'm one of those people who does everything right as far as I can tell um, I studied nutrition and as far as I'm aware I eat a very healthy diet and maybe I don't get enough phytoestrogens this is a new thing that's been coming up in a lot of my research and reading on menopause and perimenopause sorry i'm just getting comfortable um so phytoestrogens plant estrogens are something i would want to do some more research on but here's what i've been finding for myself if you've watched my other videos you will recall that my blood tests revealed that i was very low on testosterone and low on estrogen we tested, um, I think it was day three or four of my cycle. So he wants me to test again on day 20, which I will do. So I've, I would have about two weeks in between the two lots of blood tests. But um, my follicle stimulating hormone, FSH, was normal. We did not test my progesterone. And I don't know why we didn't, but we didn't. And my thyroid hormone came out on the very low side of normal. Um, so he, the doctor, was wanting to put me on thyroid hormone, but I said not yet, please. Um, I don't like taking stuff. So although at the moment, right now, I'm raving about hormones, it's not something I love to take. But the revelation for me, as a lay person who really doesn't know much about endocrinology, of course, and who's just trying now to rapidly educate herself, the change this week with these two hormones that I'm injecting now, well, I inject the HGH and I rub the testosterone on, the change is subtle, but pretty noticeable. Um, it's like a general good mood feeling, a general feeling of I can do this, a positive outlook. My mood, and I, I want to almost say my sugar levels are better throughout the day. That's how it feels, more sustained energy. Sometimes with these things, it's hard to know for sure because we're in lockdown at the moment in South Africa and the gyms are not open and it's cold and it's winter. And so I've actually just stopped training as hard as I normally do. And so is my energy due to the fact that I've got more energy because I'm not training and using it up? Is my improved mood... Now, due to the fact that lockdown is being lifted, which it is right now, um, it's, it is hard to say. So one, like I would need a lot longer of a time experimenting and maybe going on and off the hormones. But the revelation so far is pretty huge that hormones play a big role. And look, to be honest, I, I see this a lot with I gym and I've done bodybuilding competitions. Um, I'm not a bodybuilder, but I've taken part in the bikini section, which is more for um, natural looking females who exercise hard. And I've seen women who inject gain in strength, their muscle tone obviously changes or improves or whatever. And so I know the power of hormones. I know the power that it can have on the body physically and how the body looks. Um, obviously how the body stores fat. I never realized that it could impact one's, I almost want to say brain chemistry. I do want to say brain chemistry. Your brain chemistry and your mood. Um, I didn't realize that. So perhaps some of my hormones are low. 
and I would be very interested to research more as to why they would be low um, like lower than normal for my age is what I'm saying when I say my estrogen is low it's lower than he would have expected taking into consideration my age and the time of the month um, and my thyroid hormone as well interesting fact about thyroid hormone I've been doing my research there as well and a lot of people on low carb diets show uh, a lowering of thyroid hormone in their blood work and their tests so I eat mostly low carb and I'm wondering whether either that does slow it down or whether that's normal so that was my other question is the lowering of one's thyroid hormone um, due to the fact that I'm more sensitive to the hormone so my receptors and my cells are more sensitive therefore I need less so for example if you're sensitive to insulin you don't need to produce as much or is it a genuine um, low hormone problem I guess one way to tell would be to take thyroid hormone um, I know when I was studying banting which is low carb eating for those who are not in South Africa when I studied banting I did a whole lot of tests um, and back then my testosterone again was low which it still is so clearly there's an issue there and that was a few years ago hey um, about three or four years ago and my thyroid hormone back then was quite low um, and my vitamin D was low which I then boosted with sun and supplements and that raised so yeah it is it's just a very interesting and fascinating world and something that I don't know enough about and I really am keen to learn because I think at this stage of my life as a mother to a young child it will be beneficial for me to be even killed in a better mood and have more energy. I've just listened now to a TED talk on menopause where they compared brain scans of a woman who was 43 I think it was and then her brain after she uh, hit menopause, proper menopause and how her brain energy, they can actually measure the energy in the brain was so much lower just eight years later after she hit menopause. So there is such a thing as brain energy, which I've been feeling lately, I must say. And it's been so hard to put into words because I've also been through a tough two years. Um, I'm a single mom and my personal life has not been so great. And so one often wonders whether it was just the situation and the emotions that were causing me to some days I almost didn't even have the energy to brush my teeth before bed you know and my son would ask me beg me to read to him or lie with him in bed and by eight o'clock I was wiped out I didn't have the spark to even move a muscle which is really not good when you're a parent you don't want to be feeling that way and I remember my little boy saying to me but mommy you're always so tired and I felt so guilty and so bad and maybe the emotional hit that I took from a big life change was part of what causes the drop in hormones I don't know what comes first or what causes what but I do know that my energy has not been where it should be and I was battling to just generate energy for myself and now this week I feel better a lot better so it's really interesting and it's something I want to research more and I'd be keen to hear your thoughts and I'm just sharing all this in the hopes that some woman somewhere will get some insight I'm 42 I usually exercise five to six days a week usually weight training with a bit of cardio I've also done a lot of running I've done some I've done two marathons, um, that was three years ago. Um, so I'm very active. And another question I have, which I would love the answer to, and I will put it here if I find the answer, is can chronic exercise over the age of 40 deplete you? Am I depleting myself? Um, also, by always not that I'm on a diet. I don't follow a set diet, but always in the back of my mind, I'm thinking about, weight and calories in calories out 
you know, I don't want to get the dreaded muffin top and the middle-aged spread. And so I'm always on the lookout, if you will, for um, if I start to gain weight, I cut something back or I exercise more. And maybe I'm depleting myself. Maybe not. I don't know. I, but these are fascinating questions. And I believe that sharing what I know can help someone. And maybe someone out there can help me if they have info for me. And that's my discussion on hormones. It's, it's really fascinating. Thyroid, very interesting. Actually, next time I'm going to get my cortisol tested. I'm reading about um, high and low cortisol symptoms in um, the hormone cure by, it's Gottfried, Sarah Gottfried, I think. Um, I will just uh, get the, the exact title of that book and put it in the description box. And there's so much one needs to know and how they all work together, all your hormones, that it's really interesting. So I actually must say I walk around feeling a lot of the symptoms of both high and low cortisol. Whether it's just um, blood sugar issues, I don't know. But I will get to the bottom of it and I will. I don't want to stop now until I feel 100%. Because this little improvement that I felt this week has been huge. Just from half an IU of GH and rubbing testosterone cream into my skin every morning. What a world of difference. And that's it for today. I hope this was helpful and I really do want to help you all.